Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias a todos. I would like to take this moment to welcome everyone to the chapel of Our Lady of the Rosary Cathedral. Today, the intention of this Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Pablo Barrios. Hermanos, hermanas, quiero tomar este momento de dar la bienvenida a todos ustedes a la capilla de la Catedral de Nuestra Señora de Rosario. Hoy ofrecemos la intención de esta misa por el, el descanso eterno por Pablo Barrio. As we place ourselves in the presence of God at this moment, we know that God is always present in our life, always knocking at the door to our hearts, our home, and to our very life. So as we will begin this Eucharist, let us open that door and let us invite our Lord Jesus Christ to come into our life and let us place our petitions, our needs, our concern, all the things that worry us before God in this Eucharist. And we offer all the, your personal prayer to God. Hermanos y hermanas, nuestro Dios siempre está tocando las puertas de nuestro hogar, de nuestro ser y también de nuestro corazón. Nosotros necesitamos abrir las puertas de nuestro mundo para acoger nuestro Señor que quiere entrar a nuestra vida. Tomamos un momento para levantar nuestra petición personal, nuestras oraciones, nuestras necesidades y todo lo que nosotros deseamos, deseamos a Dios. Vamos a levantar todos este, a Dios en esta Santa Eucaristía. The celebrant for this Mass today is Father Alex Sila. El celebrante de esta Santa Misa es Padre Alex Sila. The Mass will begin in a moment. Comencemos una mis la Misa en un momento. My brothers and sisters, let us begin our Mass by singing uh, the song, Lord, when you came to the seashore. Lord, when you came to the seashore, you were not seeking the wise or the wealthy. asking that I may follow. O Lord, in your eyes I were gazing, kindly smiling, my name you were saying. All I treasure I have left on the sand there, close to you, I will find other seas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all.
and with your spirit. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Mass. Today is Saturday, the third uh, week of uh, Easter. And uh, let us bring together all our prayers, our personal prayers, intentions of those our community, especially we remember those who are affected by directly by this virus, by the COVID, this pandemic. We pray for for recovery, for their health, and also we pray for peace in their minds and in their hearts. But also we pray for all the doctors, nurses, all the medics who are uh, helping, taking care, sacrificing uh, their own personal uh, lives, their time, security, uh, to help our brothers and sisters who are facing this uh, crisis, this pandemic. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, bienvenidos a celebrar esta misa. Hoy el sábado, tercera semana de Pascua. Y vamos a llevar todos nuestros oraciones. Uh, especialmente recordamos ellos que afect, uh, están afectados por la pandemia, por esta crisis, por esta uh, enferma, uh, enfermedad. Entonces vamos a orar por ellos, por la paz en sus corazones, en sus mentes y también por los doctores, por las uh, enfermeras y todas ellos que uh, trabajan mucho, uh, sacrifican su vida uh, para ayudarlos en este momento uh, para enfrentar esta uh, pandemia. Hermanos y hermanas, my brothers and sisters, let us now uh, open our hearts and our minds. We let the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts. And as we prepare ourselves, we ask for his pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and, and to, you, to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in, words, in what, what I have done and what I have failed, failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, every virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us the lasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, living God, who raised up the bishop St. Athanasius as an outstanding champion of your son's divinity, mercifully grant that rejoicing in his teaching and his protection we may never cease to grow in knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. She was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, she grew in numbers. As Peter was passing through every region, he went down to the Holy Ones living in Liga. There he found a man named Aeneas, who has been confined to bed for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heal you. Get up. And make your bed. He got up at once, and all the inhabitants of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. 
Now in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. She was completely occupied with good deeds and almsgiving. Now during those days, she fell sick and died. So after washing her, they laid her out in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs, where all the widows came to him weeping and showing him the tunics and the clothes that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to her body and said, Tabitha, rise up. She opens her eyes, saw Peter, and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. And when he had called the holy ones and the widows, he presented her alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many came to believe in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our response, sorry, Psalm. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, precious in the eyes of the Lord, is the death of his faithful ones. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. Those you have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of the disciples of Jesus who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. 
while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer walked with him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to live? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. En aquel tiempo, muchos discípulos de Jesús dijeron al oír sus palabras, este modo de hablar es intolerable. ¿Quién puede admitir eso? Dándose cuenta Jesús de que sus discípulos murmuraban, les dijo, ¿Esto los escandaliza? ¿Qué sería si vieran al Hijo del Hombre subir a donde estaba antes? El Espíritu es quien da la vida. La carne para nada aprovecha. Las palabras que les he dicho son espíritu y vida, y a pesar de esto, algunos de ustedes no creen. En efecto, Jesús sabía desde el principio quienes no creían y quién lo habría de traicionar. Después añadió, por eso les he dicho, que nadie puede venir a mí si el Padre no se lo concede. Desde entonces, muchos de sus discípulos se echaron para atrás y ya no querían andar con él. Entonces Jesús les dijo a los doce, ¿También ustedes quieren dejarme? Simón Petro le respondió, Señor, ¿a quién iremos? Tú tienes palabras de vida eterna y nosotros creemos y sabemos que tú eres el Santo de Dios. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in times of crisis, the desire to have peace and stability is something that everybody needs most. In times of sickness, we need care and healing. In times of persecution and war, we need peace. In times of losing loved ones, we need consolation and accompaniment. In times of economic crisis, we need support and help. Crisis, then, is something unwanted unexpected. However, it happens. And as we see, it is happening now in our world and we experience it as well in our local communities. From home, 
The readings today give us power for hope and consolation. It says that the church was at peace at the time. In the first reading, it says that the church was at peace and its numbers grew. What is interesting is that the Holy Spirit accompanied the disciples to continue the mission of Jesus, of healing the sick, of preaching the gospel, and even of rising the dead. This truly brings us hope and consolation. We see here that the Holy Spirit is the inner power of the church, who nourishes, protects, and makes it grow. The Holy Spirit empowers the disciples and the faithful to manage and establish new communities with new ideas and creativities to move forward. We see how a big number of the faithful come to believe and form a new community of believers of Jesus. This new reality shows that God is at work. That the power of God, the Holy Spirit, is at work. That the resurrection of Christ is truly a great hope. A reality that unites and encourages the disciples to proclaim Him and His kingdom. This is, we see, the inner dynamic that amid crisis and suffering, the power of God is at work to change and transform the hearts of people, to form the life of people following the proclamation of the gospel and witnesses the life of the disciples. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in times of crisis and we are in great need on how to establish peace in our lives. This peace that we most need, not crisis, but peace. Do we see that God is at work in times of crisis? Do we see the dynamic the power of God, the Holy Spirit, works in us? Do we still experience God's presence in our daily lives? Do we see the movement of the Spirit in this time of testing? What kind of hopefulness or vision and new reality that would come, would come out after this crisis? What kind of future would be after this pandemic? There are many more things, questions, changes, realities that we may expect. The fact is that whether we want it or not, we will have to face and go through this crisis. And we do. As people of faith, let us look at God. Let us focus on the great dynamic amid this pandemic, or instead of this pandemic, we look at this, focus on this, the dynamic, the power of God to transform. The great power of movement and transformation, to look at it with the eyes of faith. To manage and to do what the Spirit leads and tells us to do. To follow the path of the Lord. And it is not an easy path. We have to move together. In the Gospel, even, we see that some of the disciples of Jesus we see that the disciples, the followers of Jesus, 
they feel attracted and amazed with him for his teaching and the great work that he performed. But also at the same time, they feel the real challenge, challenges of following him. To follow Jesus, my brothers and sisters, is to face challenges, real challenges, and crises in life. That is called discipleship. The grace of hope and perseverance is what we always need. We need to make use of it. We need to recognize that grace of hopefulness, the grace of new vision, the grace of perseverance. We need to adapt ourselves to the power of God. In times of testing, we need to learn from the disciples, from the first followers of the Lord. Peter, for example, in the Gospel, gives us a testimony which is a great consolation with his words in responding to his teacher's challenge. Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. My brothers and sisters, let us ask the Lord for power and strength, for hope, the grace of perseverance and consolation during this time of testing. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, en tiempos de crisis, el deseo de tener paz y seguridad es algo que todos necesitamos más. En tiempos de enfermedad necesitamos cuidados y curación. En tiempos de persecución y guerra necesitamos paz. En tiempos de perder seres queridos necesitamos consuelo y acompañamiento. En tiempos de crisis económica necesitamos apoyo. La crisis es algo no deseado, inesperado, sin embargo, Sucede ahora en el mundo a medida que experimentamos también en nuestras comunidades locales. Las lecturas de hoy nos dan una poderosa esperanza y consuelo. Dice que la iglesia, la primera iglesia, estaba en paz y su número creación. Creció. Lo interesante es que el Espíritu Santo acompañó a los discípulos a continuar la misión de Jesús, sanando y proclamando, sanando a los enfermos y proclamando el Evangelio, e incluso resucitando la muerte. Esto realmente nos trae esperanza y consuelo. Vemos aquí que el Espíritu Santo es el poder interno de la iglesia que nutre, protege y hace crecer. El Espíritu Santo capacita a los discípulos y a los fieles para administrar y establecer nuevas comunidades con nuevas ideas y formas creativas de avanzar. Vemos como un gran número de fieles llega a creer y formar una nueva comunidad de creyentes de Jesús. Esta nueva realidad muestra que Dios está trabajando. El poder de Dios, el Espíritu Santo, está en el trabajo. Que la resurrección de Cristo es verdaderamente una gran esperanza, 
una realidad que une y alienta a los discípulos a proclamar a Cristo y su reino. Esta es la dinámica interna, que en medio de la crisis y el sufrimiento, el poder de Dios está trabajando para cambiar y transformar los corazones de las personas, para formar la vida de la iglesia y guiando la proclamación del evangelio y los tigos y los testigos, la vida de los discípulos. Hermanos y hermanas, estamos en tiempos de crisis y tenemos una gran necesidad de cómo establecer la paz en nuestras vidas. Esta paz que necesitamos, no crisis, sino paz. Nos preguntamos, ¿vemos que Dios está trabajando en tiempo de crisis? ¿Vemos la dinámica, el poder de Dios, el Espíritu Santo, obra en nosotros? ¿Todavía experimentamos la presencia de Dios? ¿Vemos el movimiento del Espíritu Santo en este tiempo de prueba? ¿Qué tipo de esperanza, de visión y nueva realidad surgiría de esta crisis? ¿Qué futuro sería después de esta pandemia? Hay muchas más cosas, preguntas, cambios, realidades que podemos esperar. El hecho es que lo queramos o no, tendremos que enfrentar y atravesar esta crisis. Como personas de fe, miremos a Dios, encontrémonos en la gran dinámica en medio de esta pandemia, el gran poder de movimiento y transformación con los ojos de la fe. Administrar y hacer lo que el Espíritu nos guía y nos dice que hagamos. Seguir el camino del Señor. No es un camino fácil. Un camino fácil. Tenemos que movernos juntos. En el Evangelio de hoy, incluyo, incluso vemos que algunos de los discípulos se sintieron atraídos y asombrados con el Señor por sus enseñanzas y su trabajo, pero también sienten un verdadero desafío de seguirlo. Hermanos y hermanas, al seguir a Jesús también significa que enfrentar desafíos reales, la crisis en la vida. Hermanos y hermanas, eso todo es como ser discipular para enfrentar los desabios, la crisis en la vida. Estos son partes de nuestra vida de seguir nuestro Señor. La gracia de la esperanza y la perseverancia es lo que siempre necesitamos. Necesitamos adaptarnos al poder de Dios en tiempos de prueba Necesitamos aprender de los discípulos. Petro, por ejemplo, nos da un gran consuelo con sus palabras al responder al desafío de su maestro. Señor, ¿a quién iremos? Tú tienes palabras de vida eterna. Y nosotros creemos y sabemos que tú eres el santo de Dios. 
Hermanos y hermanas, entonces, pidamos al Señor su poder, la fortaleza y esperanza, la gracia de perseverancia y consuelo durante este tiempo de prueba. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer the fruit of the earth, and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness you have received the wine, we offer the fruit of the wine. And work of human hands it will become for us our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for, for the praise, praise and the glory of his name, name for, for our good, good and, and the good of all his holy, holy church. church. Look, O Lord, upon the offerings we present to you in commemoration of St. Athanasius, and may witnessing to your truth bring salvation to those who profess, as he did, an unblemished faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But it is time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pledge our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is, is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dofal, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your, your resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, our Coadjutor, Bishop Alberto, all the clergy and the entire people which you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us now as one family, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. A new day, we told us peccata mundi, miserere no obis. A new day, we told us peccata mundi, Miserere no obis, Agnus Dei, we told us peccata mundi, Dona nobis pa My brothers and sisters, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Spiritual Communion Prayer My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. La Communion Espiritual Creo Jesús mío que estás presente en el Santísimo Sacramento del Altar. Te amo sobre todas las cosas y deseo recibirte dentro de mi alma. Mas no pudiendo hacerlo ahora sacramentalmente, ven espiritualmente a mi corazón. No permitas, Jesús mío, que jamás me aparte y separe de ti. Así sea. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, Almighty God, that the true divinity of your only begotten Son, which we firmly profess with St. Athanasius, may through the sacrament ever give us life and protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, our Mass is ended. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we sing our final song, I would like to make a few announcements. Tomorrow is Sunday of the Good Shepherd. It's a day in which we are also praying for vocation. I invite all of you on this day to celebrate Mass with our Bishop in Spanish at 9 a.m. and at 11 a.m. with another Bishop in English. Now at 2.30 tomorrow, we will I will invite two vocational directors to come uh, to our community and to share their calling and to invite young people who might have the calling to follow Christ.
and they will provide some information for us and that will be broadcast at 2 30 p.m. Also in the evening at 6 p.m. Uh, our youth will be having a novena for all mothers. Now they will begin the novena this evening but it will go for nine days until Mother's Day. So I invite all of you to come and join them and pray along with them, especially in this month of Mary, in which our Pope invite all of us to pray the Rosary. We have many opportunity to pray uh, with our community, and I invite you to join them, especially this evening at 6 p.m. Thank you for being here with us, and let us now close up with the concluding song. Lord, you knew what my boat carried, neither money nor weapons for fighting, but nets for fishing, my daily labor. Oh, you are gazing, kindly smiling, my name you are saying, all I treasure, I have left on the sand, close to you, I will find other seas.
Thank you everyone for being here. Gracias a todo por estar aquí con nosotros. Que tengan buen día. Have a marvelous day every day, one.